Hello, welcome to the Sim Hanger. I'm Mark, the Sim Hanger for all things flight sim related. Well, the honeycomb yolk's now starting to ship in volume in the market and reviews starting to appear online. And I see I wasn't the only one who was a little bit lost with the application that comes with the yolk from the Fly Honeycomb website Yolk Input. Well, I've done some digging and I think I've more or less figured out how it's used. So we'll be having a look at that and deciding whether it's any good or not. We'll also, in Explain and Prepared, be looking at some of the finer details of how to calibrate your yoke, be it honeycomb or otherwise. So stick around for that. Let's get started. Start the application by clicking the icon on the desktop. Once it starts up, as you press various buttons, the view changes and it gives you a reference number for the particular button or switch, as well as on the right hand side, the code used for that particular function. And it's this code that has caused most of the confusion. Menu bar at the top. It includes templates which are pre-loaded. They come with the application and this list will grow over a period of time as well as profiles which is where you save your particular preferences. There is also an option to delete existing key bindings. Now the problem has been because it uses the Simlink coding how to find a reference for those codes. Let's go under the question mark to manuals, choose the language of your choice and page right down to the last page of the manual. There at the bottom you will see a reference to links and the one we're interested in is the Prepared Learning Center and the SDK as highlighted. Click on that link, it is a clickable link and it will take you to this page. To find a complete list of all the variables, click on the SDK, the Software Development Kit, then References, then Variables, and right at the bottom, Event IDs. And this will bring up a complete list of the Simlink coding that can be used to program the Honeycomb Yoke. It should be noted there is no prerequisite to use this application and the honeycomb yoke can be configured in your flight simulator as per any other yoke. There is a menu in the top right hand corner for quick access. The SimConnect name is the code that will be used in the application. It should be noted that the yoke input or alpha flight control bridge is regarded as an add-on by prepared and is reflected in your add-ons menu and can be enabled or disabled to suit your preferences. The other important point to note is that any configuration within prepared as well as through the yoke input application both will be active so it's a good idea if you're using the application to delete the configurations within prepared itself. This will prevent a conflict or a particular key or button carrying out dual tasks. Just don't delete the access assignments or the hat switch configuration. Back to the yoke input application which I've overlaid on the simulator for ease of access. And you can see I'm using button seven and eight and I'm zooming in and out. So let's see how we can change the assignment of buttons 7 and 8 away from zoom in and out to something else by putting in a variable from the schedule that we found under the SDK. I'm going to stay at the top and I'm going to use increase and decrease throttle and change buttons 7 and 8 away from zoom to control the throttle. So I'll highlight increase throttle under the SIM Connect name and I'm going to overwrite on button number 8 making sure I leave the greater than the K and the full colon in place. I've copied and pasted that on. You'll notice that the repeat box is ticked and that's as I hold that key down it will continue that action which is what I want. Now I do exactly the same for decrease throttle, paste that in 
I now need to save these changes. So I'm going to go save and activate. I'm not going to overwrite an existing profile. I'm going to create a new profile. I think we'll call it new profile test. I'll save that. And yes, I want to activate that. By activate, it means push it through to the flight simulator. Let's see if it worked. Well, I'm happy with that. That was definitely working. No problems at all. What I'm now going to do is go and load a template, the default template. I'm going to save it under a different name. I'm going to call it New Profile Default. I'm going to save that and then activate it to push it through to the flight simulator. When it goes through to the flight simulator, you know it's active as a green bar with a message comes up. I need to mention that the example I've given is a fairly simple and straightforward one. Some of the settings and variables, including condition variables for switches, 1 and 0, are far more complex and beyond the scope of this video to cover in detail. If you'd like to see more from SimHanger, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell for future notifications. We're back in prepared again and uh, everything's at the default setting and I'm just using the ailerons. I'm now going to go to options and to the calibration, make sure simple controls are not switched on and there we can see the sensitivity and that varies between 127 and 1, 1 being least sensitive. So I've now turned the ailerons to 1. And as I turn the yoke, you can see that the aircraft is sluggish to react. It's behind the yoke. This will affect the control of the aircraft and its response to your input. Let's now go and turn it the other way to full sensitivity, 127 and try it again. As I move the ailerons, you can see the reaction is immediate and instantaneous. So the aircraft's going to react much quicker. Even with small inputs, you can see the ailerons are moving. It's going to be very responsive. The other factor that's worth looking at is the null zone. And that again, the higher the figure, the less sensitive or greater area you would have to move the yoke before you get any form of movement. I've set it to one, which is almost no null zone, and you get a lot of reaction fairly quickly. If I set that, say, let's set that up to 95, again it's on a scale up to 127, and you can see I'm moving the yoke quite a lot before I get any response from the aileron. As yokes use potentiometers to track the movement, it depends on the quality of the potentiometer in the yoke to define how narrow or small you can have the null zone. As a yoke gets older, you may find you need to increase the size of the null zone as you're getting spiking and slight movement without moving the yoke. With the Honeycomb product, while the potentiometers seem to be of a very good quality, and you can turn the null zone almost down to one in all axes, no problems at all so far. So what's the best setting to use? Well, to some degree that depends on your yoke and the age of your yoke. But the more sensitive, arguably the more realistic it will be, and the smaller the null zone, the better. It may also depend on what sort of aircraft you're flying. If you're flying one of the older birds, well, if you're looking for realism, it may be better to turn down that sensitivity to give you more of a heavy, slower feel to the aircraft overall. Turning now to X-Plane. X-Plane doesn't have a bridge or yoke input application because it doesn't need it. Full configuration is in X-Plane 11, as well as a fairly diverse and very useful user profile saving options for various aircraft. 
What I do want to have a look at is the sensitivity control. This is slightly different to prepared. The default is moderately fine-grained control near the center. 100% is very fine control and zero is fully linear control. So let's have a look at what impact that has. First of all, we're going to have a look at default and there we can see the response curve that applies. So slow input initially and then gaining momentum. I'm now moving the honeycomb yoke. I'm just moving it slightly and I am getting a little bit of movement there. Let's now go and change that and we're going to move that right up to fine grain control near the center and again go back and I'm moving it and it is moving very very finely very tight control there very slight movement and when we take a look at the response curve we can see why we're able to get that small amount of movement fine input initially and lastly let's turn that down to 0% which is fully linear have a look at the response curve and it's almost a straight line which is what we would expect and now having a look we can see it is directly proportional the movement of the aileron to the movement of the yoke what setting is best well that's again a matter of personal preference and perhaps what you're flying i find that more or less the default settings are pretty good for me the response curves can be manually altered to suit your preferences. There are various other settings in X-Plane and they're worth experimenting with. Many flight simmers spend a fair amount of time configuring their scenery and their graphic settings, but the hardware often forgotten about. It's time well invested in making sure that you've got your settings for your hardware just the way you want them. And it can improve your flying and certainly your landings, particularly in GA VFR flight. Turning now to the yoke input application that comes with the honeycomb yoke, well, I'm less than impressed. And I think that Aerosoft, who have created that software for honeycomb, could take a leaf out of X-Plane's book. The X-Plane application is intuitive, easy to use, quick to set up easy to save profiles. I hope you found this useful and informative. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now. Hello, I'm Mark and welcome to the Sin Hangout. The Sin Hangout. I bet you wish it was a Sin Hangout.